musicals have been nominated for the 1984 Tony Award. Tonight, you will see them all. The first is the Tap Dance Kid. Fabulous feet, the Tap Dance Kid. Show us your fabulous feet. is proud to present the American Theatre Wing's 38th Annual Tony Awards, given for excellence in the Broadway theater. This has been an exciting, productive, and rewarding season for those of us who work in the theater. And we celebrate tonight by bringing you, live from the stage of the Gershwin Theater, right on Broadway, the 1984 Tony Awards with your host, Robert Preston. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you and hello. Did you notice the music? 76 trombones from the music man. Oh, I had the joy of playing that musical on Broadway for a couple of years, uh, about 18 years ago. <laughs> 
And I also had the added joy of making the movie of the same name. And ever since then, every time I've come out on a stage anywhere, I've been played on by that music. That's very complimentary, of course. But especially for the composer, my dear Meredith Wilson. Now watch and see what happens when my smashing co-host comes out. Listen to what they play. Miss Julie Andrews. <laughs> smiling at her. Well, I just proved a point. What was that? Didn't you hear what they played you on with? Sure, I could have danced all night always. Yeah. Well, that's because, of course, Julie was my fair lady. Now, that was one of her big numbers. It's the songs they remember. Yeah, it isn't fair, but after all, the American musical theater is truly a collaborative art form. What with the book writer and the designers, lighting, costumes, and scenery, the director, the choreographers, the performers, but what is it we remember? The songs. The songs. The music and the lyrics. I guess it isn't fair, but there it is. So, this evening we'd like to pay particular attention to the work of four artists whose music is being heard on Broadway right this minute. Now we'll see how they got started and remind ourselves of the body of their work that they've created that's brought them here to tonight. And their work will be performed by people of the theater who have taken this wonderful original material and helped popularize it for the world. And although we will be handing out the lovely Tony Awards to the deserving winners, we'll explain our voting procedures at the end of the evening. So don't go away. We'll be right back with the songs, the winners, and the stars. Who are tonight? Carol Channing, Nancy Dassault, Robert Goulet, Robert Guillaume, Beth Howen, Larry Kirk, Michelle Lee, Dorothy Loudon, Shirley MacLaine, Liza Minnelli, Mary Tyler Moore, Anita Morris, Bernadette Peters, Anthony Quinn, Tony Randall, Cheetah Rivera, Tony Roberts, Leslie Uggams, Gwen Verdon, Raquel Welch, and your hosts, Julie Andrews and Robert Preston, with special performances by Gene Berry, Hinton Battle, Liz Calloway, Marilyn Cooper, Catherine Cox, Beth Fowler, George Hearn, Mandy Patinkin, Alfonso Rivero. This portion of the 1984 Tony Awards is sponsored by Diet Pepsi. Now Diet Pepsi tastes better than ever. Taste improved by Diet Pepsi. And General Electric. At GE, we bring good things to life. great honor of presenting the first Brooks Atkinson Award for unique theater-related ac activity. Now let me explain the affection that the theater community felt for this extraordinary man. Brooks Atkinson was the drama critic of the New York Times from 1925 to 1960, and he covered every show in those 35 years, except for the time that he served overseas in World War II. He was a supportive and driving force for excellence in the American theater, to which he was as passionately devoted as the artist whose work he reviewed. Another young man joined the Times in 1925 as well, and although his work appears in other publications too, 60 years later, Al Hirschfeld is still drawing for the New York Times and for us tonight on this curtain. So, it is altogether appropriate that this first Atkinson Award be presented to Al Hirschfeld for his unique contribution, 60 years of drawing the theater and through his art, bringing people that much closer to our artists and our stages. Mr. Hirschfeld. Thank you. 
And my thanks to all you wonderful actors who have been my models without pay. And my thanks to the producers who've invited me to all their opening nights with free theater tickets. <laughs> I'm particularly grateful to the theater for introducing me to my wife, Dolly Haas. I did a drawing of her for the New York Times some 40 years ago. We married, and in close collaboration, produced a daughter, Nina. So you see, I'm deeply indebted to the theater for allowing me to live way beyond my means, just like everybody else. <laughs> and now, to be the first recipient of the Brooks Atkinson Award is an overwhelming experience that I shall not even attempt to describe in bumbling prose. My thanks to all of you, and especially to Brooks. is the ninth musical on Broadway by Can Kander and Ebb. Now these two are nothing if they're not versatile in their choice of subject matter, and the music is assertive and accessible. But there is a thread that runs through everything they write. The very positive fact that life is meant to be lived, not observed. Now, in 1965, John Kander Music and Fred Ebb Lyrics wrote their first musical called Flora the Red Menace and audiences were enchanted by this song that Flora sang. When it all comes true, just the way you planned, it's funny, but the bells don't ring. second musical, the much-praised Cabaret. Here come the Avenue, welcome, friend of the Marching Station. Look, look, to see you, to see you, to see Cabaret won the Tony as the best musical of the year, and Kander and Ebb won as best composer and lyricist. Patricia Ziprot won as well for her outstanding costume design, and she is nominated again this year with Anne Hold Ward for Sunday in the Park with George. The other nominees are Fiona V. Aldridge for La Cage aux Folles, <laughs> Jane Greenwood for Heartbreak House, and Anthea Silbert for The Real Thing. And the winner is... Theone Aldrich. In 
In January of 1968, Cantor and Ebb's new musical was about a little French-Canadian boy and his relationship with his eccentric photographer uncle. Do you remember when Robert Goulet sang The Happy Time and won the Tony for it? Is that I'm longing to see you smile and hear you laugh so I can have the photograph and remember you remembering the happy time. I don't remember you. I don't remember you. I don't recall a single thing we used to say or do. Yes, we were wrong. This, this moment is new. Because I can't. I won't. I don't. Remember. Another Candor and Ebb musical, the earthy and exuberant Zorba, about a man who lives every moment of his life to the fullest. And there was a woman, the sort of Greek chorus, who fed us painlessly melodic nuggets of truth. Life is what you do till the moment you die. on Broadway now, with Anthony Quinn recreating his movie role as Zorba. I ask nothing, I judge nothing, I am free. There's one Zorba, and that Zorba I must be. Heaven waits for other men, but not for me. I fear nothing. I hope for nothing. I am free. Opa! Opa! In 1969, dear Boris Aronson won the third of his six Tonys for his outstanding scenic design for Zorba. Tonight, the nominees in that category are Clark Dunham for End of the World, Peter Larkin for The Rink, Tony Strigas for Sunday in the Park with George, and Tony Walton for The Real Thing. And the winner is... Tony Strigas for Sunday in the Park with George. Thank you very much. All right. Uh... next musical was called 70 Girls 70. Yes. It reinforced their positive philosophy of living life to the full. Yes. 
life keeps happening every day. Say yes when opportunity comes your way. Can't stop wondering what to say. You'll never win if you never play. Say yes. Yes, we get Perigold right outside. At four white Cadillacs, you can ride. Nothing's gained if there's nothing tried. musical to open in New York in the year 1975 was Chicago. Kander and Ebb's musical adaptation of the 1926 tale of Roxy Hart. Roxy and her friend Velma form an act. And the combined performances of Chita Rivera and Gwen Verdon made one of the most memorable nights in the theater. Go, girl. Come on, babe, why don't we paint the tag? And all that jazz, I'm gonna rouge my knee. And roll my stockings down And all that jazz Start the car I know a whoopee spot Where the chin is cold But the piano's hot It's just a noisy hall Where there's a nightly brawl And all that jazz Oh, you're gonna see your shimmy shimmy shake And all that jazz Showstopper, City Lights. Preserves. Oh, please, my nerves. City lights. I love for the city lights. The bulbs of those beaming bright. Beckon and me there. Be there. Country air means zilch to me. I won't breathe nothing I can't see. So let me quit.
appropriate moment could there be to list the nominees for outstanding lighting design? They are Ken Billington for End of the World, Jules Fisher for La Caja Full, Richard Nelson for Sunday in the Park with George, Mark B. Weiss for Moon for the Misbegotten, and the winner is Richard Nelson for Sunday in the Park with George. Well, I have a few people to thank because uh, none of us ever does this alone, and I want to thank the uh, awesomely talented crew at the Booth Theater, uh, especially Brian Lynch and Richie Siegel, our chief electricians, and John Hulbert and uh, Pete Miller, who are our front light men, who have become human dimmers to make this work. And uh, my spectacularly good assistant, John Hastings, and our wonderful stage managers, Charlie Blackwell, and Fred Orner, and Loretta Robertson. Thanks. Woman of the Year won four Tonys, including another for Candor and Ed. It was about a television newscaster who wasn't doing so well in her personal life. As she did on Broadway, Raquel Welsh plays a newscaster, and here she asks advice of her former husband's current wife, played by Mary Tony for this performance. I'll bet your friends are all celebrities. That's wonderful. What's so wonderful? You can make a pot roast. That's wonderful. What's so wonderful? First you brown an onion. The public wants your autograph. That's wonderful. What's so wonderful? You raised a teenage daughter. That's wonderful. What's so wonderful? First you find her diaphragm. Oh, the grass is always greener where some other tenant pays rink now long out of business. At this moment they relive the excitement of the daughter's first prom. Never be a wall, flower sitting in the chair, up against the wall, waiting for some boy to say, how about a dad? Never take a chance on it, never even once, <laughs> mustn't be a dunce, waiting for the look and hey, how about a twirl, not my little girl, you got to stay. against the wall, <laughs> glued against the wall, plastic to the wall. <laughs> 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 Your happiness can be found with me.
Well, now that you have heard some clever lyrics and lovely music from shows gone by, let us deal with the current crop of scores nominated as the season's best. They are The Rink, which you have just seen, music by John Cantor, lyrics by Fred Ebb. Baby, David Shire, lyrics by Richard Mulby. <laughs> La Cage au Full, music and lyrics by Jerry Herman. <laughs> Sunday in the Park with George, music and lyrics by Stephen Sondheim. <laughs> and the winner is La Cage au Full, music and Thank you. This award forever shatters a myth about the musical theater. There's been a rumor around for a couple of years that the simple, hummable show tune was no longer welcome on Broadway. Well, it's alive and well at the palace. <laughs> and so I would like to thank my beautiful cast and crew and staff my beautiful Lacage family for their love and support and for giving me the best of times with special thanks to Arthur and Harvey and Scott and my brilliant musical department, Don Pippin, Jim Tyler and Gordon Harrell. The real reward for having worked on Lacage was the joy of having worked on Lacage. Thank you. Even with the scores, the characters in a musical have to talk to each other from time to time, and that's where the book writer comes in, creating the structure on which the entire work is fashioned. Nominees for best book are Baby by Sybil Pearson, La Cage au Fall by Harvey Firestein, Sunday in the Park with George by James Lapine, The Tap Dance Kid by Charles Blackwell. And the winner is La Cage au Fall by Harvey Firestein. This one spins. Um, I <laughs> some saw the Tonight Show. Um, First, I, I've got to thank Arthur Lawrence and Jerry Herman, who took me by the hand, changed my diapers, showed me how to write a musical forever. I am grateful to them. I have to thank the incredible cast, all the people that were so supportive, even the Torch Song people who kept me company, and of course, my lover, Scott, who typed everything late at night. Thank you all. I love you. Thank you. <laughs> Stay tuned as the Tony Awards bring you Nancy Dassault, Robert Goulet, Robert Guillaume, Beth Howland, Dorothy Loudon, Michelle Lee, Anthony Quinn, Tony Randall, Tony Roberts, Gwen Burton, and the music of Stephen Sondheim. This portion of the 1984 Tony Awards is sponsored by DuPont, better things for better living, and AT&T, the more you hear, the better we sound. Well, now, we've heard about musicals galore. And a visitor from another planet might justifiably think that Broadway is a theater of musicals only. And, of course, it isn't. Broadway is rich with playwrights, new writers, older craftsmen, and marvelous recreations of American classics. And we also have the artists who make it happen, the directors and the performers. For example, this year, the nominees for Outstanding Performance by a Featured Actress in a Play are Christine Baranski for The Wife Who Became the Other Woman in the Real Thing, Joe Henderson for The Long-Suffering Mother in Play Memory, Dana Ivey for Her Elegant English Woman in Heartbreak House, 
Deborah Rush for her slightly dim-witted ingenue in Noises Off. And the winner is Christine Baranski in The Real Thing. I would prefer to think of this not as a victory over my gifted peers and friends, but as a souvenir of a remarkably blessed, I could say, fertile time in my life. <laughs> the real thing has been the most elegant, exhilarating collaboration I will probably ever be a part of in the theater. I thank every man and woman associated with it. I regret that I don't have time to mention each name and attach an appropriate superlative I must, however, with all my heart, thank the architects of my good fortune, Mike Nichols, Tom Stoppard, Manny Eisenberg, Yvette Schumer, Michael Oubre, and Jeff Hunter, and my three darling husbands, Jeremy Irons, Kenneth Welsh, and Matthew Coles. Thank you. for Outstanding Performance by a Featured Actor in a Play are Philip Bosco for his Capitalist in Heartbreak House, Joe Mantegna for his High Pressured Salesman in Glengarry Glen Ross, Robert Krosky for his Defeated Salesman in Glengarry Glen Ross, and Douglas Steele for his Aging Drunk in Noises Off. And the winner is Joe Mantegna in Glengarry Glen Ross. Uh, quickly, I would like to acknowledge the men of Glengarry, Robert Prosky, James Tolkien, Jack Wallace, Lane Smith, J.T. Walsh, and I'm forgetting one, Mike Nussbaum. I want to, th um, Greg Mosier and everybody at the Goodman Theater in Chicago, David Mamet, my friend, um, Elliot and Marjorie Martin, and three very important women. My wife, Arlene, my mother, Mary Ann, and our dear friend, Cordis, who has given us a place to stay while we're here in New York. <laughs> Thank you very much. Our second musical nominated as the season's best is called Baby. Three women meet in a doctor's office. A 43-year-old mother with kids in college who has found out she is pregnant again, a gym teacher who is finally pregnant after two years of trying, and a 19-year-old student who is not married. I can't wait. I can't wait. For a whole lot of years, you might say that I've been expecting. But I always made sure I didn't expect too much. I sat around on my potential. Abilities, and all I've got to do is choose. I want it all. I want it all. I want my whole female experience and all. I want it all. I want the morning sickness and the elation. I want to be scarred in a hurry to the book 
like what? Like an overtone of romance, an element of surprise. The things any grown-up practical woman gives up if she's American Theatre Wing. We established the Tony Awards, but we are much more. As president of the Wing for the past 23 years, I'm delighted to report that we've continued our many programs and events, all serving the community through the theatre. The Wing's twice yearly working in the theatre seminars bring to students and young professionals not only stars, but producers, playwrights, composers, and designers. Those that truly make theatre happen. Of course, there's the Wings Hospital Program, which brings live theater to shut-ins at hospitals and institutions. Then, too, we help sponsor scores of performances for children in public schools through the Saturday Theater for Children Program. These few words for the Wing apart, I add my congratulations to all of tonight's distinguished nominees. I thank those who have contributed so much to make this 38th Annual Tony Awards such a wonderful evening. Thank you, Isabel. Now, the nominees for Outstanding Performance by an Actress in a Play are Glenn Close for her lovingly unfaithful wife in The Real Thing, Rosemary Harris for her eccentric bohemian seductress in Heartbreak House, Linda Hunt for her sanely intelligent performance as a showbiz agent in End of the World, and Kate Nelligan for her coarse peasant woman with the soul of a young girl in A Moon for the Misbegotten. And the winner is Glenn Close in The Real Thing. I owe Earl Kirby $50. <laughs> I want to salute my fellow actresses who I share this category with. I'm deeply honored to be with them. I'm deeply honored to accept this. The real thing has been the greatest experience in my career so far. I want to thank Jeremy Irons, my supremely talented and generous co-star, all our cast and crew, and my family in Greenwich and Big Piney, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. I'm so very happy to be here. We have had some remarkable performances on Broadway this season, and the nominees for Outstanding Performance by an Actor in a Play are Rex Harrison for his aging philosopher in Shaw's Heartbreak House, Jeremy Irons for his highly intellectual British playwright in The Real Thing, Calvin Levels for his poorly prepared student desperate for an education in open admissions, and Ian McKellen for his one-man love letter of a show, Acting Shakespeare. And the winner is...
Jeremy Irons. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. I'm honoured to be singled out amongst the extraordinary performances I've seen from other actors here on Broadway this season, both those nominated and unnominated. Thank you for that. I would also like to say that it's the, the happiest eight months of my life professionally. That is thanks to Mr. Nichols and Mr. Stoppard for asking me to do it, for Mr. Eisenberg to running a wonderful show. What a good man he is. Um, Thank you, Glennie, for really providing as much of my performance as I provide myself. Thank you also, I would like to say, to my colleagues who I miss in England, who for the last 15 years have prepared me to take you on on Broadway. And lastly, but by no means leastly, thank you for running my family, as well as your own career. Thank you, Shanaird. The nominees for Outstanding Direction of a Play are Michael Blakemore for Noises Off, David Laveau for Moon for the Misbegotten, Gregory Moshe for Glengarry Glen Ross, Mike Nichols for The Real Thing. The winner is Mike Nichols. In the uh, tradition of Tony acceptances, I would like to thank the Lord and Sam Cohn. However, this may be heresy, but Sam Cohen has appeared to me. <laughs> he is my friend and my agent, and I thank him. I thank our brilliant cast, who made rehearsals as much fun as it is to go to the Plymouth Theater at night. I thank our great designers, Tony Walton, Theron Musser and Anthea Silbert for making the stage look magical. I thank my co-producers, Manny Eisenberg and the Schubert Organization. Our two great stage managers, Martin Herzer and Alan Hall. And of course, last in the company, and most of all, Tom Stoppard. It doesn't seem entirely fair to receive this and also get to be Tom's friend. I'd last of all like to thank my wife Annabelle who stuck with me through thin. Max and Jenny, go to bed. Stephen Sondheim and his work, but among them is not that he settles for easy. You don't check your mind with your coat when you buy your ticket for a Sondheim musical. The first Broadway show that carried a Sondheim credit was West Side Story. Although he's known far and wide today as a composer, he began his sprint to fame as a lyricist. Could be, who knows, there's something due any day I will know right away soon as it shows. Make him cannonball it down through the sky, gleaming his eye bright as a rose. 
The next show that sported Sondheim lyrics was a fabulous gypsy with music by Julie Stein. Of course, we all remember everything's coming up roses, but the number I found most informative was the one sung by the stripper. You can pull all the stops out till they call the cops out. Grind your behind till you're playing. But you gotta let it go. Something familiar, something peculiar, something for everyone, a comedy tonight. But Sondheim wanted more. He wanted to write the lyrics and the music. So in 62, he wrote the whole score of a funny thing happened on the way to the floor. Nothing with kings, nothing with crowns. Bring on the lovers, liars, and clowns. Sondheim's next musical. Anyone can whistle. A satirical attempt to deal with some of the world's problems. As George S. Coffin once remarked, Satire is what closes on Saturday night. And of course, it did. But anyone can whistle left us some wonderful songs. Did you hear? Did you see? Is a parade in town? Are there drums without me? Was a parade in town? Cause I'm dressed at last at my best and my best. opted for company. Company was the name of the show, but some members of the company had lingering doubts. Pardon me, is everybody here? Because if everybody's here, I want to thank you all for coming to the wedding. I'd appreciate you going even more. I mean, you must know there's a better thing to do and not a word of it at all. I'm calling another man I'm going to marry, but I'm not because it wouldn't ruin anyone as wonderful as he is. Thank you all for the gifts and the flowers. Thank you all. Now it's back to the showers. Don't tell Paul that I'm not getting married today. Somebody hold me to close. Somebody Somebody force me to care Somebody make me come through I'll always be there As frightened as you How will survive Being alive Being alive Being The nominees for the outstanding reproduction of a play or musical are American Buffalo, a play about society's dispossessed, The Inarticulate Losers, written by David Mamet, an American in his mid-thirties. Death of a Salesman, the classic American tragedy, written by Arthur Miller, three years before David Mamet was born. Heartbreak House by George Bernard Shaw, written in the years surrounding World War I, a condemnation of a society rushing to embrace apocalypse. And American playwright Eugene O'Neill's A Moon for the Misbegotten, which takes a soul-searching look at the terror and loneliness of living and the occasional human contact which makes it bearable. And the winner is... Death of a Salesman. Whitehead cannot be with us this evening, as he is working in Australia, Mr. Whitehead is, and Mr. Stevens is preoccupied in Washington. Our congratulations to them. In 1927, Florence Ziegfeld built a magnificent Art Deco theater which bore his name. In 1968, it was torn down, and there were many in show business who felt a chilly wind among them Stephen Sondheim. His next musical was called Follies, and the set was a partially demolished theater in which show business hopefuls rehearsed. Uh, 
I'll go anywhere. <laughs> I was up all night painting these legs. <laughs> Now, the nominees for Outstanding Choreography this year are Wayne Salento for Baby, Graziella Danielle for The Rink, Danny Daniels for The Tap Dance Kid, and Scott Salmon for La Caja Full. And the winner is Danny Daniels for The Tap Dance Thank you. I have to thank our producers for putting their money where their convictions were. Uh, Stanley White, Evelyn Barron, uh, Harvey Claris, and uh, Michael, Michael Stewart. Uh, I want to thank also uh, our author, Charlie Blackwell, for writing such a beautiful show, and, and composer Henry Krieger and lyricist Robert Lorig. My associate choreographer, DJ Gianni, who has to put up with an awful lot because he's, I'm not only his boss, but I'm his father, and he does a wonderful job. <laughs> and uh, I want to also thank uh, my great dance group, our uh, <clears throat> fabulous dancers Hinton Battle and Alan Weeks. And last but not least, of course, is our brilliant director, Vivian Madelon, who brought the whole thing together and gave me so much help and encouragement. Thank you very much. Tuned as the 1984 Tony Awards continue with Julie Andrews, Robert Preston, Bernadette Peters, Tony Randall, Robert Guillaume, Beth Howland, Carol Channing, Leslie Uggams, and the music of Jerry Herman.
This portion of the 1984 Tony Awards is sponsored by Avon. And the more than a million Avon representatives all around the world are proud to support the 1984 Tony Awards. Hats off to Broadway from Avon. Night Music won the Tony for Best Musical of 1973. It was the most romantic score Sondheim had written to date. A lot of the good old one, two, three, one, two, three. Can there be anyone on any continent who does not know this lovely song? Isn't it rich? Are we a pair? was based on the oft-told tale of a mad, revengeful barber in 19th century London. Amidst all this wonderful melodic skullduggery were several lyrical moments. Nothing's gonna harm you, not while I'm around. Nothing's gonna harm you. No, sir, not while I'm around. Demons will charm you with a smile for a while, but in time, nothing can harm you, not while I'm around. wonderful thing about a really good show song is that long after the show is over and done with, the song still has the power to involve audiences who never got to see the original show. This next song is from Merrily We Roll Along. Not a day goes by, not a single day, 
But you somewhere come into my life And you don't go away And I have to say If you do, I'll die I walk day after day after day after day after day after day after day Till the days go by Till the days go by Till the days Sunday in the Park with George. George is the French Impressionist, Georges Seurat. And the park, just outside of Paris, was the stage for his famous painting, A Sunday Afternoon on the Island of Le Grand Jacques, which now hangs in the Art Institute of Chicago. George has worked on his pointless painting of the various park regulars for two years. And having just sketched his mother, is about to bring order out of chaos and complete his canvas at last. Mandy Patinkin is George, and Bernadette Peters is his mistress and model. Remember, George. Order. Design. Tension. Balance.
nominees for Outstanding Direction of a Musical are James Lapine for Sunday in the Park with George, <laughs> Arthur Lawrence for La Cage of Faux, <laughs> Richard Maltby Jr. for Baby, <laughs> Vivian Nantelon for The Tap Dance Kid, and the winner is Oh dear. <laughs> Arthur Lawrence for that. From the first day that I met with Harvey Firestein and Jerry Herman, La Cage au Folle has been the most joyous and affectionate experience I've ever had in the theater. And that's partly due to the nature of the piece, but mainly to all the people involved, on stage, off stage, backstage, and in the audience. I am deeply grateful to all of them but there's one person in particular without whom I could not have done this show, and that's Fritz Holt. Thank you, Fritz, and thank you. Thank you. I'm here for the salesman company, <laughs> and they join me in congratulating our colleagues who are being honored tonight. The nominees for best play are Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross by David Mamet. Okay. Noises Off by Michael Frayn. Play Memory by Joanna M. Glass. And The Real Thing by Tom Stoppard. And this year's Tony for Best Play is The Real Thing, Tom Stoppard. Everywhere. I have to thank seven actors, three designers, a director, and seven producers in 30 seconds. That's about 0.7 of a second for a producer. Um, perhaps the others will forgive me if I only get as far as Manny Eisenberg and Mike Nichols. As you know, a writer with a play coming towards Broadway, he really won't get far without the support of two people, particularly an artistic kind of fellow spirit who will uh, protect every phrase. Um, and a realist with his feet on the ground who understands how budgets work, and I was very lucky to have both. Manny loved the play. Mike figured he knew how to get the overheads down to 125,000 a week. <laughs> Thank you both very much. <laughs> Thank you. A particular thank you to some other partners, Roger Berlin, Ivan Block, and Byron Goldman, and a thank you to Jeremy and Christine for their kind words, to Mike for his friendship and for his talent, and to Tom Stoppard, whose graciousness is only exce exceeded by his brilliance. Thank you very much. I want to say a special thank you to Michael Codron, without whom this probably would never have happened in New York. Stay tuned for Julie Andrews, Robert Preston, Bernadette Peters, Jean Barry, George Hearn, Shirley MacLaine, Robert Guillaume, and La Cage au
If I had to sum up Jerry Herman in only one word, there is only one word that could be used. Optimist. Now, I'm not saying that in a Herman musical, the boy always gets the girl, or this year, the boy. But if he doesn't, it isn't for lack of trying. This is a composer who doesn't recognize defeat, for whom there's always a future, and not just for people, but for countries too. This is the land of milk and honey. This is the land of sun and song and moon. In 1961, when Jerry Herman wrote Milk and Honey, it was the first musical to use an Israeli setting. This, this is the land that heaven blessed and this lovely land is mine. Shalom, shalom, you'll find shalom, the nicest greeting you know. Says hello. And Milk and Honey was nominated for the Tony that year. Not bad for a composer's first Broadway show. He won it for his second Hello Dolly, and so did the star, the outrageous and wonderful Carol Channy. Before the parade passes by. I'm gonna go and chase Saturday's high life Before the parade passes by I'm gonna get some life back into my life Don't you just love that? And there's another song just before the big rousing finish that is typical Herman.
Would I be there when he called If he walked into my life today Should I blame the times I pampered him Or blame the times I bossed him What a shame I never really found the boy Here, Frankie Michaels and Beatrice Arthur from MAME won Tony's as outstanding featured players in a musical. This year, the nominees as outstanding featured actress in a musical are Martine Allard for The Tap Dance Kid, Liz Calloway for Baby, Dana Ivey for Sunday in the Park with George, and Leela Kadrova for Zorba. And the winner is Leela Kadrova for Zorba. Really, I cannot believe it. <laughs> Excuse me, but my voice, I don't know, disappeared completely while I was sitting there. 
I was working and working in theaters and uh, making movies in all over the world, but my real dream it was always to play on Broadway. And it is only thank to M Michael Kakoyanis, my director, who brought me here to on Broadway and in the film as well, and to stay here to, tonight in front of all of you and receive this award, it is really more than I could expect, really. And I wanted just to thank my producers, Fran and Barry Weisler, and of course, the remarkable Anthony Queen. and all the members of the cast and crew of Zorba, these wonderful people who helped me so much with their gentleness and love. I love them because they are wonderful and <laughs> talented people. <laughs> and then I think I think also my husband because of his love and care and I thank God because he's my producer, my director and my partner. I love you all. The nominees for Outstanding Performance by a Featured Actor in a Musical are Hinton Battle for The Tap Dance Kid, Stephen Jeffries for The Human Comedy, Todd Graff for Baby, Samuel E. Wright for The Tap Dance Kid, and the winner is Hinton Battle for The Tap Dance Kid. Well, oh, whoa, this is wonderful. Um, first, I'd like to thank the producers of The Tap Dance Kid for sticking it out and helping us make the show what it is, and the cast for being there, and Danny Daniels for giving me such a great number to do, and uh, Leah Bass, who's been a great support, and Charlie Blackwell, and everyone that's just been wonderful, and this for my mom. <laughs> All right, thank you. <laughs> still playing at the Winter Garden, Jerry Herman opened another musical. Like Mame and Dolly before it, Dear World was another about a woman of undomitable spirit. If music is no longer lovely, if laughter is no longer lilting, if lovers are no longer loving then I don't want to know if summer is no longer carefree if children are no longer singing if people are Four years passed before another Herman music musical opened on Broadway. It was called Mac and Mabel. I was Mac, Mac Sennett, and Bernadette Peters was Mabel, Mabel Norman. It was all about silent films. I received eight Tony nominations, and I got to sing. I won't send roses or hold the door. I won't remember which dress you wore. My heart is too much in control. The lack of romance in my soul will turn you gray, kid. So 
stay away here. Time heals everything Tuesday, Thursday. Time heals everything April. Broadway again this year with his usual positive outlook, his confidence that the best of times is now. And now, Gene Barry, who stars with George Hearn in the flamboyant La Cajo Fall, a nightclub in San Tropez. Bonsoir, bonsoir. La Cajo Fall welcomes you to our world famous review, starring the notorious and dangerous Cajel. Ladies and gentlemen, I warn you to remain in your seats while Le Cajel perform. The management will not be responsible for your safety. And now, I beg you, open your eyes. You have arrived at La Cage au Fall.
of La Cage aux Folles, Mr. George Hearn. I am what I am. My own special creation. So come take a look. Give me the hook. I have to hide in life's not worth a damn till you can shout out loud I am what I am I am what I am I don't want praise I don't want pity Some awards many nominees have been waiting for all evening. But as it happens, our audiences here in the theater and at home have seen most of these nominees tonight on this program, which should make it just that little bit more exciting. So place your bets. The nominees for Outstanding Performance by an Actress in a Musical are Retta Hughes for her passionate performance as the minister of a storefront church in Amen Corner, Liza Minnelli as the hippie prodigal flower child of the 60s in The Rink, Bernadette Peters, who plays a delectable 19th century artist's mistress and her own daughter 90-odd years later in Sunday in the Park with George. And Chita Rivera as the proprietor of a dilapidated roller skating film in the rink. And the winner is... Chita Rivera in the rink. I'm very happy that I bought the bottom of the dress this year. <laughs> I've been coming for so many years and losing for so many years and being quite happy about it. I decided why buy the bottom of the dress? Nobody ever sees it. <laughs> I would just like to say, first of all, thank you for this. What a wonderful honor. And I would also like to say that I, I've always felt that I've been rewarded all through these years because of every show I've ever, ever been in and every face I've ever looked into. So thank you to everyone that I've ever worked with because you're just wonderful and you've made me exactly what I am, whatever it is. But I want to thank particularly those people who 
are responsible for my being here. Fred, Ebb, and John Cander, who promised me and gave me a wonderful show and a magnificent score. And I shall remember it till the day I die. Thank you. Terrence McNally for writing this wonderful show with such love. A.J. Antoon for directing it with dignity and pride and love. Graziella, Danielle, oh, uh, Ther uh, Theoni, um, oh, Mark, and, and Peter. I'm getting very nervous. And besides that fantastic company of ours that was ju that's just absolutely magnificent. Magnificent. Thank you. This is actually dedicated to my mother, who, ne who never saw it. And, Ma, you can relax now. Thank you very much. <laughs> the nominees for Outstanding Performance by an Actor in a Musical are Jean Barry, who owns the nightclub, and discovers the depth of his love in La Cage au Fall. George Hearn as the flamboyant, the caring and proud Zaza in La Cage au Fall. Ron Moody as Fagan, the villain you love to hate in Oliver. And Mandy Patinkin as the dedicated and consumed artist in Sunday in the Park with George. And the winner is George Hearn in La What some people won't do. To... <laughs> you call her the Tony, but her real name is Antoinette. I want, you to I want to thank everybody connected with the show. Everybody in the, the crew, the cast, the, the musicians, uh, the, the management, wonderful. I couldn't possibly remember everybody's name. I remember my mother's name. Hi, Mom. And <laughs> then there's Alan Carr and, uh, and all of our management, uh, Marvin Krauss and, and, uh, and Barry and Fritz, the wonderful Fritz Holt again. Uh, uh, specifically, I'd like to thank uh, Theone Aldrich, who proved again the old adage that the clothes make the man. <laughs> uh, Harvey Firestein. That gentle giant, Jerry Herman. Uh, Scott Salmon, who joins the long and illustrious list of choreographers I have brought to tears. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody in the cast. And on one side of this, probably the front and not the back, I'll have engraved the name of Arthur Lawrence. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, first of all, it's such a pleasure for me tonight to present someone else with an award. <laughs> I mean that. This is an award uh, that relates to the thing closest to my heart, and that is the celebration of the Broadway Gypsy. When I first saw a chorus line, Anywhere you want. it must have been in uh, May of 1975, I was sitting in the, the theater, and before the curtain went up, I began to cry. On the glittering evening of September 29, 1983, theatrical history was made. 1,500 extraordinarily lucky people were privileged to be sitting in the Schubert Theater when a chorus line broke the record and celebrated becoming the longest-running Broadway show of all time. That performance was a performance like no other since or before. 332 actors, actresses, gypsies, singers, dancers from all over the world who had appeared in their own country's productions of this legendary musical flew into New York and dazzled us with their especially staged numbers arranged just for the celebration. And when it was all over, there wasn't a dry eye in that house either. So, to crown that celebration, here is the first actual 14 karat gold Tony. To accept it is producer J Joseph Papp.
Thank you, David. You know what happens to people when they get past 40? Two things. One is they sort of lose their memory. And the second is... Um, I'm going to read these remarks because I don't want to exclude anybody. I think of this, Tony, as a golden pie, uh, baked by many people and institutions, and therefore to be equitably divided and shared. The first big slice must certainly go to the audience who bought and are still buying the tickets which permitted us to break the record for the longest running show in Broadway history. Thank you, dear audience. Almost half of this pie must go to Michael Bennett. <clears throat> for conceiving the show, but especially for his miraculous staging of, of, uh, of 332 worldwide chorus line performers at the Schubert Theater last September, which celebrated the record-shattering 3,389th performance of this unstoppable musical, an event of amazement and theatrical uh, wizardry whose logistics alone would have staggered the commander of a division of soldiers. But the prowess of uh, Michael's army was not especially in arms, but more in legs, in voices, in acting in love, all coming together through the co consummate skills of a highly trained and disciplined corps capable of responding swiftly and magnificently to Michael Bennett's inspired leadership. So a big slice for those on the line. A goodly portion indeed must be reserved for the irrepressible composer Marvin Hamlish, whose heavenly music carried a chorus line to fame and fortune, and there's a lot of Tony Pye for the men whose, uh, whose, uh, whose sparkling prose, whose inspiration and witty poetry uh, made millions of people laugh and cry. Ed Kleban, James Kirkwood, and Nicholas Dante, the writers of the cho chorus line. And finally, with the emotion provoked by the words and music came the motion the dancing under the urgent and demanding direction of co-choreographer Bob Avian, a juicy part uh, slice to you, Robert. And more of the same to stage designer Robert Wagner for those stunning mirrors which reflected the dancers in the striking costumes of Theone V. Aldridge, all made beautifully visible by the genius of the lamp, the genius, genius of the lamp light, uh, uh, Tharan Musa. This is a great team, a great show, and a great captain. Thank you very much. We have already seen some wonderful excerpts from the four outstanding musicals that are nominated for this year's Tony. And they are Baby, <laughs> La Cage au Full, Sunday in the Park with George, and the Tap Dance Kid, and the winner. La Cage of Fall! sitting here tonight, I tried to rehearse and think, but you know what happened? It's about perseverance. It's taken six years to get the show on, because that's when I saw it in Paris, and no one remembers it. A little man called Jean Perret, the actor, started to create those characters, and Jerry and Harvey and Arthur brought them to singing and dancing life. Um, the guardian angels, all, all without the help, I, I'm just the conduit to getting this all together. These people are real estate, money, talent, and niceness. <laughs> And we need that in the theater. And also, it's the only award show where people who aren't nominated show up. Hollywood, take a lesson from Broadway. Thank you. Thank you. Happy birthday. Thank you. Congratulations, Sean. I love you, Lenny. I love you, Sandy. Johnny and Laura, you're the best. <laughs> there are... There we are. This year's crop of winners who go to show that the lights of Broadway are shining brighter than ever. And how appropriate that this is the very beginning of National Theater Week. All across this country, people will be celebrating the theater, and we are pleased to have been the first. You bet. And from all of us to all of you, theatrically speaking...
Nominees have been selected by the experts of the Tony Nominating Committee from the productions which have opened this season. The secret ballots were then voted by the 670 qualified industry voters, and the results have been tabulated by the accounting firm of Lutz and Carr. Because